Bibles in the back. I know some of you might want to look it up on your phone just to follow along. But uh, I'm going to invite Tyler to come on up. Tyler's going to be our reader today. Thank you, Tyler. And uh, I keep thinking you're in high school, but not quite, right? Eighth grade. So thank you, Tyler, for just being available to, you know, use your gift and ability of reading the word. And uh, it's not an easy thing for everybody to get up and read, is it? And just get up in front of everybody. But thank you. And Peter, verse 4, uh, chapter 4, verse 7 through 11. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be clear-minded and self-controlled so that you can pray. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a mul multitude of sins. Offer hospitali hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administrating God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Tyler. All right, thank you again for being available. And as we think about God's word for today, um, one of the themes is uh, definitely about serving and using our gifts, however uh, God has led us to. And uh, I'm looking on to see if we've got any more uh, comments here, okay? But uh, we have comments people post in from Facebook Live, and I sometimes like to read them. But I'll just ask you right now, have you ever worked as a server, good or bad experience? Maybe say, I don't know, is it all right to say where you worked and good or bad if you want, but just... I don't know, you started it, Ian, so I'm going to pick on you first. Chili's. Chili's. Love Chili's. And you? Yeah, I liked it a lot. Didn't, didn't have any mean customers? Oh, here and there. <laughs> here and there. Okay, honestly. Okay, who else? Anybody else been a server? Okay, Debbie? Diamond Lake Resort. Where is that? Southern Cascades. Southern Cascades, okay. All right, good. Enjoyed it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, what's the name of it again? Crater Lake. Crater Lake. Oh, yeah, I've heard of Crater Lake. Okay. All right. Uh, anybody else? Yeah, Jim. The ladies' tea here. Ah, the ladies' tea. We got some good come throwbacks to the days with the fancy ladies' tea. Wow. How was it? Did you have good customers? Were the customers friendly, mostly? <laughs> Tea hot enough, you know, didn't get any pushback, okay. Uh, so, okay. I was, I was uh, working on December 7th, 1941, in the Los Angeles restaurant. Okay, Frank was working. Did, did you get that? December 7th, 1941. That's Pearl Harbor Day, right? You were working in a restaurant in Los Angeles. Frank went, went to serve his country, yet, but you were working in a restaurant when that news hit, and then here you are as our World War II veteran here today. Wow, that's an incredible story. Um, thank you, thank you. So all these reminders, um, I mean, you know, if you've ever, if you've even just recently had dinner out or something, right, you, somebody comes to your table that uh, that serves you. It used to be like, a lot of times they used to call like waiters or waitresses. Now I think the universal term is just server, right? Um, and it's, you know, it really is. You think about it, quite a privilege. I mean, I read something that said for most of human history, it was really only royalty that was served. 
You know what I mean? So anyway, just interesting, thinking about how you know, many of us will you know, kind of regularly, every once in a while, whatever, go out to eat and, and uh, uh, serving. Um, and think about that. Um, and how, you know, I think, too, just reminders, too, even when we have something doesn't quite go right with our order and we kind of get a little upset or something, it's like, yeah, have some grace. <laughs> you know, be kind to those people that are working hard. Right, Ian? <laughs> Any of you that have worked at a restaurant, right? Yeah, and uh, um, think about people, though, that help, too. Obviously, these are servers. They're getting paid to do what they, their job is. But um, have you ever been blessed by somebody that just showed up and gave you a hand? You know, with something. Isn't that, isn't that neat? I can't tell you how many times. I mean, I think about all the times that we've moved <laughs> over my years of ministry, and you're just so humbled when people, and many of you are right here today that have helped me out with this, but when people will give up a few hours a day, and just, nah, it's, it's really amazing, that service that we receive uh, from time to time. And um, as we get into our Bible reading for today, it starts with some powerful words uh, that uh, begin this theme of service. In verse 7, it says, The end of all things is near. Ooh. Okay, so, <laughs> what do we do? The end of all things is near. And um, the question I guess I raise is, how do you, as you actively look forward to Jesus' return, how should you act toward God and toward others? Okay, how do we act as we wait, and many have, you know, a lot of you can turn on any program or, or, or uh, you know, social media post or news program or, or even religious speaker, and people are talking about, yeah, Jesus is coming soon. It's going to happen. Everything's all aligned, and it's going to happen. Well, okay, that he is coming soon, and he has said he is coming soon for ever since his ministry, but what do we do? In verse 7, it says, be alert and watchful. And prayer is your greatest asset. Other versions, like the one that I'm reading from the NIV, say, therefore be clear-minded and self-controlled so that you can pray. So clear-minded, self-controlled, pray. And all these terms, clear-minded or sound judgment, okay, looking at situations, you know, maturely, correctly, calm, cool, collected, you could say, under pressure, um, watchful, alert, um, and living in light of Jesus' second coming, right? Be wise how you live, okay? Just, you know, just the simple terms, but very rem good reminders. And then about prayer, and it says, so that you can pray, pray. And prayer, this greatest asset that God has given us through his Holy Spirit, right? A miracle we don't understand completely, but we've been called to pray at all times, in all places, in all circumstances, to pray, and it's interesting, uh, uh, someone has said, we, we join our weakness to God's strength. Okay, so we pray. Okay, my weakness, I'm, I'm leaving that and putting it, all things in God and his strength, not mine. And my own ignorance even, I, I don't know all things, but God does. I want to give it to and ask for God's wisdom. So I'm weak, God's strong. I ain't so smart, not the, you know, sharpest tool in the shed or, you know, the elevator doesn't always go all the way to the top, but God's does. I want to go on that. I want to ride on his elevator, right? My, his wisdom. And, uh, you know, think about even when Jesus was going to the cross and he prayed fervently. We're going to see, we look at that word in a moment, fervently, drops of sweat, like drops of blood, right? Literally was coming down. And his prayers, connected to the Father, enabled him to face the cross. And on the, on the flip side, Peter's lack of prayer led up to his famous denials. <laughs> okay, I mean, talk about, compare, contrast. God's, God and me, you know, us. But um, still, we pray for that. Lord, build in me your good judgment, uh, knowing that, yes, Christ could return any day. And the question, again, are you alert? Are you watchful? Are you prayerful? And, and recognizing your need, my need, for, uh, you know, the armor, the Spirit's armor to, to guard us uh, each day. Um, in Luke 12, 20, let's read this together. Let's read this verse where it says, You also must be ready, 
Because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Luke 12, 40. Okay, got it. Christ is coming. He's coming soon. And what do we do now? We just huddle up in a closet and just pray and... No, okay. A couple of key, key things. Stay focused in your love for one another. Okay, that's active. Love one another. And uh, I mentioned uh, some translations in verse 8. Uh, love each other deeply, it says. Uh, some other translations read love each other fervently. Have you heard that word? It's not one we use too often, but fervently. Um, it's actually an athletic term. So like if, if an athlete is training and striving to, they're a high jumper and they're going to strive in all they can to reach that bar or to uh, the finish line. Or I think about that uh, amazing game I was at. It was a Friday night. It was at OSU, Gill Coliseum, the state finals of the basketball that I mentioned earlier. And man, those boys are working hard. And, you know, I can see the coaches, you know, they're, they're, Figuring out what, how do we got to play this game? So, uh, Helena's here. That's Helena's uh, Max's mom. I just showed his picture up on the screen a little bit ago. But um, I think about how much they train and prepare and work, don't they? Your your boy was one of those that put everything he had into it, didn't he? And uh, we're talking about that great coach they had too. That he was smart, but fervently, right? And and think about that. Do we have that same perspective as we start focusing our love for each other? Stretching our love to the limit for others in the body of Christ and those around us. Anticipating needs and, and making sacrifices to meet them. Um, Jesus said in John 13, 35, By this all men will know you are my disciples if you love one another. And on the flip side, nothing's more destructive to the Christian witness and to God's church when we struggle with that. And we're arguing and we're complaining and we're just like the world <laughs> right and uh, so what's a reminder for us all as I even said about you know when you go to the you say you're going out to lunch today maybe after church or something be gracious right? be forgiving as Christ forgave you and me and what did Jesus say on the cross father forgive them they don't know what they're doing but how do we do that? How do we relate to our brother or sister with that same mindset? I, uh, I need to be gracious here. I feel wrong, but maybe we lovingly talk with that brother or sister and, 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 solve, a, and solve the problem, make that hurt uh, resolved. In, in Mark 11, 25 and 26, it says, when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Um, we had just started going through The Chosen. That was one of the powerful scenes in The Chosen. They depicted the uh, Sermon on the Mount. And how all these, you know, look at the Sermon on the Mount. It, it's, it's hard. <laughs> and we were thinking about these examples. Who can live that way? And people were just like, what, love your enemy? <laughs> uh, give them your, go the extra mile, walk, you know, uh, walk, uh, you know, all these themes that we see. Okay. God's strength. Stay focused in my love for one another. Secondly, um, be hospitable to one another. We see that in verse 9. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. And um, fervent love, practical expression, hospitality. We hear that word a lot. Hospitality, this, this is Christian jo duty, but really it, there's a joy in that. Um, and hospitality doesn't ask, well, I'll be good and nice to you because I know you well, or because I like you, it just says, how can I love? How can I serve? How can I minister? And doing it without complaint or grumbling. And okay, let's admit it. Is there ever a cost to serving? I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. But yeah, it's not easy. Um, so um, a couple weeks ago, maybe a week and a half ago, I left for a, a pastor's retreat event with the Alliance of Renewal Churches. And uh, these are some of the friends I got reconnected with, some other pastors. There's about 30 or 40 of us down in Oceanside, California. And, uh, and look at this other surprise guest I got to meet up with here. Some of you know that guy? That's, uh, that's Logan Carpenter. He's our Marine down at Pendleton. So we got to have dinner together, and then I took him to the retreat center where we were staying, and that was one of our worship uh, areas. He got to be in that for a minute. And I'm just hold on to that thought for a moment, because... Um, uh, at this event, among all the people that were there, not a ton of people, but there was this one guy, Dana. 
Okay, Dana Perot. <clears throat> and I knew Dana a little bit because his mom, Sharla, had started the orphanage down in Mexico where our church has traveled uh, to help out. And I'd been there several times prior to our, coming to our church here too. But uh, so Sharla loved kids and this orphanage and this ministry reaches the whole community down in Baja, California, where, where it's at. Anyway, um, Dana has that heart of a servant too. And Dana, he's about almost 70 years old. And he goes, yeah, he helps out this one guy who's a speaker that comes to these events. And yeah, I'm just his baggage man. I just carry his bags, Dana says. And, and after every, we had these, you know, lunches and dinners and the breakfast in the cafeteria there or whatever. And uh, he was always picking up cups and plates and just running around. Oh, you need a cup of coffee? Where you feel? And he didn't have to do this. He was just there. He goes, he goes, if you have the heart of a servant, if you'd like to, if you serve, You'll never be out of a job. <laughs> there's always ways. And that's, and that's joy. That's, that's praying for other people. He's very just spirit-led and spirit-filled man. And uh, he comes up to me. He's encouraging to me. He goes, Pastor John, you wouldn't believe that. I travel all these places. And I've, I've heard of you and some of the things you've been doing. And, and I was like, really? I, how, what? But just one of those people that just lift you up. You know? You love being around people like that, right? And... Um, but that heart of a servant and um, um, offering service just freely like that. And as we think of ourselves, um, there's a couple of questions you can ask yourself. Uh, do you think yourself, of yourself as an owner or a steward? Okay, owner or steward. Okay, um, think about all the stuff you have. You know, whether it's your home, food, time. Do I own any of that? Or is God blessed me, given me these things to live and enjoy, but I'm ultimately, I'm a steward of all that God has given me, right? It's God's stuff. It's God's time, not mine. And he's calling us to do what? Out of what we've been given, gifts, abilities, time, treasure, all that, to love, care for one another, using everything that God's given us. And a couple of verses, just I love how scripture just continues to, from 1 Peter to Romans to Matthew. What does it say in Romans 12, 13? Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Okay, right there. And then, again, hard-hitting words from Jesus, Matthew 25. The king will reply, tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. And that's how we see and through God's eyes, the world and those that God calls us to love, to be hospitable towards, to serve. And then finally, uh, use your gifts and talents to serve God and one another. And you look at the categories of spiritual gifts in the Bible, and you recognize everybody's been given at least a, a spiritual gift. Speaking gifts, serving gifts, up front, behind the scenes, everything's important, right? Um, and we see that in verses 10 and 11. Sorry, as a Come down and speak into my mic really loudly. You're doing a great job, Pat. And I know this mic's uh, soon to be gone, so <laughs> we're making it work. Thank you. Uh, but in verses um, uh, 10 and 11, if anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides, that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. And all these gifts that are given. Um, uh, oh, yes. In, I'm sorry. Going up to 10. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithful administering God's grace in its various forms, speaking, serving, all these areas. And um, all things are important. You know, you may not be gifted as a teacher. Okay. But God's gifted you to do other things, to show mercy, to organize things and help them run efficiently, or uh, even giving you the ability to make money and, and bless others through that. All gifts God's given us, our abilities, our time, our talents, God's entrusted to that, to us. How do you use it for his glory? How do you use it for his glory? So um, here at church is one way, and I can't tell you how blessed people were by yesterday. And if you were here, many of you were here helping. It took an army to bless the Hopper family and to, to, for this service to happen and whether it was food, whether it was guys out in parking cars or helping get cars parked, uh, cleaning, serving, setting up. I mean, praise God for his church, okay? And uh, I think it's just wonderful uh, as pastor to see how God's people 
rise to the occasion. And thank you, church. That was a real honoring to the Lord, and it was a blessing to the Hopper family in recognizing, again, uh, a life fully lived and a blessing uh, to the world through, through Vern Hopper. And so, um, yeah, using all the gifts God's given us, using gifts for his glory, whether here at church or out in the world, and maybe in places, too, that God only sees. But praise be to God that he does acknowledge and see and bless that. And, yeah, you ever get tired? Anybody ever get, anybody that was here yesterday get, get a little tired <laughs> at the end of the day? Sure you do. We do, and we get, hopefully, rest and renewed, and here many of you are today again. But, again, when we're even at our end, pray. I don't serve, you don't serve by your own strength, but by the strength God supplies. And that God can take that, even that ounce that we got, multiply what I got left, God, for your glory. And uh, everyone's got a different gift. Again, as Romans 12, 6 says, different gifts according to the grace given us. And just celebrate that. Celebrate that difference and those giftedness that each person has and brings to the table. Our ultimate goal is what? That God would be glorified. And may God give, may we give God the glory and not anyone or any of ourselves. Leaving all the results of our prayer, brave, daily decisions in his hands. Being quick to grant forgiveness, to show hospitality, to use our spiritual gifts. And with that understanding again, like we started with, with the first verse that uh, Tyler read earlier, the end of all things is near. Okay, that's right. Christ could be coming at any time in the midst of all that daily things, right? Love that's shown, hospitality that's shown, prayer. Uh, and uh, I'll leave you with a, a final thought and, and verse here. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, one of my favorite verses in Scripture that we can bring all things to Jesus. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30 says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. And that's when we give everything to God. Lord, fill me, renew me each day, and help me be a servant wherever you call me to go. Um, I, I hope that that goal, again, always, God, we want to give you the glory. No, that may, may others not look at me, but look at, look at him. Look at Jesus. And may they even see Jesus in some small way. May they see Jesus through me. Not me, but may they see you glorified through me. I talked about this with the kids, but as we go into prayer now, I just want you to think about this one thought. You know, write down a step of service, small or large, that you could put into practice this week. And what James, James 1.22 says, don't just listen to the word, do what it says. And think about that. What, what's God put on your heart today? Um, I'd like us to...